want to redefine mathematics, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some way of moving up and down the number line for the numbers to actually exist, right? Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere, right? <laughs> so the first thing you need to do is you need to work out how you're going to do that. So let's say I'm going to choose for my mathematics, I'm just going to choose one thing, and I'm going to say I take a dot and I divide it, and I'm going to stick with that one, and I'm going to divide it, and I'm going to create the number one, and that gives me that boundary we've been talking about from zero to one with the negative one. And then I know how I've got a reflection of my, everything in the negative, everything in the positive, infinite positive, negative, can then actually then continuously divide that one. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so if I, let's say we, we divided it into two parts, so we might as well carry on with the number two at that point because there are two things, if you imagine. So look, we divide it into two into two, into two, into two, and you take all of that and you add it all up, and what number do you get? One. Exactly, one. <laughs> or, yeah, it makes a whole unit measure and it's all yeah. full of division, yeah? So that's fantastic, yeah? yeah so so we, what, we've, what yeah. we've done is there, we used the number two to continuously divide something, yeah. and we could look back and say, it was, a one. It was one, yeah? <laughs> exactly. But how then can we say about the number three? How are we gonna get there, yeah? yeah? because we need a successor function, mm -hmm. yeah? So we've got a predecessor function. Mm -hmm. So now what we're gonna say is, okay, we're gonna to have to introduce another thing, which is called squaring, yeah? And we talk a lot about rotational squaring and what squaring is, but squaring is a decompression of number space, right? Into, yeah, into a higher two, dimension. Higher dimension yeah. space, yeah. So we're moving from 1D yeah. now into 2D, and what happens is we can run the same process, and you get a one over three, something like that. And then for each one of those processes, if you like, or it's a backwards written R, so we call it YAR. So you're dividing the two series, yeah, if you ratios, like, the yeah. ratio. Yeah. And that ratio then will define the, the, the successor. The successor yeah. 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 And that's how you can actually move up the number mm -hmm. line by decompressing into from one dimension into two dimensions. And so that's a different type of ah. approach to mathematics, right? So if you think about numbers as kind of like a value, that's actually what it does because it, it uh, decompresses in a higher dimensional space. Yeah, so you yeah. could say a square is made of an infinite number of lines. Yeah. yeah. So if you have a line of one, there's an infinite number of them that make a square and it goes up one, so we know that that's also a measurement. So, you know, there's a definite decompression and we know that because when we add square numbers up together, what they're called the limit, if you like, if you add all them up together, there's a limit that it starts to approach, yeah? Or you could say, you know, the bathtub will only fill so much, you know? And then that can provide us with the ratio which we need in order to reduce the successor function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then once we've produced that successor function, we can move on and we can divide that infinitely into that and find out the predecessor function if we want to go backwards down the line or if we want to go up, we have to decompress into a higher dimension, do the calculation and then make the division and we can step forward. No. But that's a little bit kind of like a Fibonacci series as well, like well, in prin principle. Yeah, quite often as we were talking about the Fibonacci spiral itself can be sort of drawn as a line. You can just go like up one, long one, then down two, cross three, up five, right, yeah. etc. Um, but you can also then fill in those squares and it's like filling in the, the space on the page, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what we're saying. You know, you can draw out the line on a 2D space, because a line can exist in 2D, um, and so can a 2D shape. It can also exist in 2D. Yeah? So we need a two-dimensional space in order for numbers to really start making sense. And we've done that really then without actually engaging in the complex number plane or anything like that at the moment, right? Yeah? Although complex number plane can also be integrated into that system.